What talent, what genius, what a loss. Sammy Davis Jr., dead of cancer at the age of 64, and Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets, dead of pneumonia at age 53. Davis's death was expected. He's been fighting throat cancer for several months now. A heavy smoker, Davis was the consummate entertainer, singer, dancer, musician, mimic. Jim Henson's death was not expected, and the circumstances are stunning. He died of pneumonia after being admitted to a New York hospital with a massive bacterial infection. As doctors fought the infection for 15 hours, Henson went into cardiac arrest several times and finally succumbed. We begin tonight with his life, NBC Stan Bernard. This was Jim Henson's breakthrough, the creation of the wonderful characters on Sesame Street. But that, that's what a friend is, Bert. The man who made the Muppets and so much more died suddenly in a New York hospital from what the doctors called a massive bacterial infection which attacked his lungs. Friends said Henson, as a child, watched Peter Pan fly, but always kept his eyes on the strings to see how it was done. Performing was one of the things that was sort of farthest from my mind. I hated to stand up in front of the class and do anything at all. Clement's pretty good. He's, he can get away much better. He's much more comfortable than I am in front of an audience. A joke? Oh, people want to think we're really engaged. <laughs> am I the voice for... For Jim. The man. Uh-huh. Well, this, now you're getting very surrealistic. I, I've never understood the, the concept of alter ego in the first place. The shy, soft-spoken Henson created characters out of foam rubber and wool and ping-pong balls and anything else that struck his fancy and then added personalities and foibles. It seems as though we never have a chance to be ourselves. And it seems as though the frog makes all my decisions for uh, me. Piggy, well, I don't I make say, all your decisions I for I you. I don't know if I can take Piggy it makes anymore. many of her own anymore, decisions. He created the Muppets in the 1950s in Washington for the program Sam and Friends and even made commercials. Buddy, what do you think of Wilkins Coffee? I never tasted it. Sesame Street went on public television in 1969. It was aimed at children up to five, teaching them basic English and arithmetic. But children of 55 also found themselves entertained and enlightened. It was always a good idea because they were coming with the concept of, of doing educational and entertainment uh, by means of television. And this, this is basically a good idea. Um, but. When it went on the air, it was an immediate hit, and I think it surprised everybody. It took us all by surprise, and it was delightful. Delightful enough to grow to 15 international co-productions seen in 80 countries. Henson went from one extraordinary success to another. His Muppet Show, which is produced in England, became the most widely seen program in the world. 100 countries with 235 million viewers. I do. Last year, he sold his Muppet company to Disney for an estimated $150 million. I'm doing shows that I want to see. Um, I'm hoping other people like to see them, too. It's not easy being green. They did, and they will. Having to spend each day but no one but Jim Henson can be Kermit. Leaves. Stan Bernard, when NBC I, News, New York. It could be nicer being red or yellow or gold the circumstances of jim henson's death are so chilling that we've asked our chief science correspondent robert Bazell to join us tonight and it is a commentary on our times that we must ask the question there's already speculation that it could have been aids what have you been able to find out about that no doctors at new york hospital where he died say it definitely was not aids it was pneumonia that had spread to a massive infection through his bloodstream into his entire body in this day and age can't doctors do more about that kind of an infection? Well, not in his case, because well, apparently he had let it go so long, so far, that it became what used to be called galloping pneumonia in the old days. It had, his kidneys were failing, his heart was failing, it was an infection through his entire body. By the time he got to the hospital, it was too late. Jim Henson was a man who brought so much joy to the world, but in private, he was a dedicated workaholic, so... Indeed. That, it, seems, that seems to be the main factor that he had what he probably thought was the flu he let it go too long and if he had gotten medical attention two or three days ago he'd be with us tonight an enormous loss tonight the death of jim hansen thank you very much robert Brazell, for coming in equally great is the loss of sammy davis jr who died today at his beverly hills home he was a man of so many parts and so many contradictions all of them on display in a lifetime of public performing 
NBC's George Lewis tonight on his life and times. I knew a man who jangles and he can't speak. Sammy Davis said that of all the songs he sang in his career, he identified most closely with this one, Mr. Bojangles. That man, that, that culmination of different black performers, minstrels that I've known, performers who got hooked on junk, who got wiped out by alcohol, I've seen them disappear, great dancers. Though he faced some of the same problems in his own life, Sammy Davis didn't just disappear. He never had a normal childhood. This was his first movie appearance at age seven in 1933. A short called Rufus Jones for president. He toured the vaudeville circuit with his father and his uncle, never went to school, living in rundown rooming houses in a racially segregated society. We stayed in the black hotels, ate in the black restaurants. Uh, socialize with the, the other blacks within that community. Life for Sammy Davis was often a struggle. In 1954, as his nightclub and recording career was taking off, he lost an eye in an automobile accident. Davis credits his good friend Frank Sinatra for helping him get back on his feet. In the 60s, Davis, Sinatra, Dean Martin, Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop were known as the Rat Pack and starred in several films together. In Robin and the Seven Hoods, there was a scene where Davis destroyed a bar. Off screen, alcohol and drugs were destroying him. He finally gave up drinking after being hospitalized for near fatal liver and kidney problems. But the one addiction he could not overcome was smoking. He did not stop until the doctors told him he had throat cancer. A few months earlier, he was reflecting on the way he had lived his life. Bad habits and all. One segment of my brain says, yeah, you could have done it differently. But then the, the front part of it just says, then you wouldn't have appreciated what you have now. One thing he had was a whole lot of versatility as an entertainer. For six decades, he sang and danced and clowned and acted. Now, on three, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> His last public appearance was in December of 1989, when he accepted an NAACP Hall of Fame award. I'd like to thank all of you who prayed for me and have given your thoughts and your kindnesses this came just a month after he had taken his last turn as a dancer, at the taping of a TV tribute honoring his 60 years in show business. You can't please everybody. You know, but you please the majority, and don't ever let them say, gee, I didn't like the performance. That doesn't mean everybody's gonna like what you're doing, but at least they'll be able to say, he performed for me, man. He gave his all. Mr. Bo. Sammy Davis Jr. and Jim Henson, American Originals. Mr. Green has a mower he purchased brand new. Oh, the wonderful things he thought it would do. But it sputtered, it coughed, it gave quite a wheeze. And mowing the yard was not such a breeze. And so when the time came to buy something new, Mr. Green bought a snapper, and so should you. For your yard and your garden, these snappers you see, take mowing and grooming more seriously. And now when he mows, Mr. Green is seen with something we'd call a serious machine. The time has come for a new kind of full-size luxury, the 1991 Chevrolet Caprice. From its proven V8 power and rear-wheel drive to its quiet cushioned ride and solid steel frame, we wanted you to see how beautiful the new Caprice is underneath, because you might forget. 
after seeing what comes on top. The time has come for the new Chevrolet Caprice. Prepare to be impressed. With the superpower summit now just two weeks away, signs today that Moscow may be willing to compromise on the crisis in the Baltic republics. Latvia's deputy prime minister says the Kremlin now has agreed to mid-level talks on independence next week with Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia. In Moscow earlier today, the U.S. Secretary of State James Baker and Soviet Foreign Minister Edward Chevardnadze began their own negotiations to prepare for that summit. And the crisis in the Baltics was at the top of the talks. NBC's John Dancy in Moscow tonight. Baker led off his talks with Shevardnadze by complaining about Soviet unwillingness to talk to leaders in the Baltics. It's not encouraging to us to see the absence of a dialogue. We would like to see this resolved, of course, in, in a peaceful manner and through dialogue between uh, the Soviet leadership and Lithuanians. But with President Gorbachev beleaguered by the situation in the Baltics, that is apparently as far as the Bush administration plans to go, for fear stronger action would harm arms control talks. Today in Estonia, people were registering to guard buildings against any attempt by Soviet troops to occupy them. But at the same time, they were getting a clear signal from Washington that the Baltics would have to take a back seat to U.S. interests in an arms control agreement with the Soviets. President Bush said the crisis in the Baltics certainly put some tension in the arms control talks with the Soviets. However, he added pointedly, We have a broad agenda of, of items that uh, we must go forward on. And we have negotiated with the Soviets when, when all of Eastern Europe was in captivity and when we had Cold War times. Baker revealed he had given some new arms control proposals to Shevardnadze when the two met 10 days ago in Germany. But he said the Soviet reply was still unsatisfactory. We still have a pretty good road to travel right now. Bush and Baker have clearly decided to handle the situation in the Baltics as a U.S. domestic political problem because they're under pressure from Congress to take further action. So every time they see the Soviets, they bring it up. But it's also clear that in the long run, the Bush administration feels arms control agreements are more important than the Baltics. John Dancy, NBC News, Moscow. And there was yet another reminder today that although the Cold War may be over, there still is work out there for spies and smugglers. Two U.S. computer executives were arrested in Florida and South Carolina for trying to smuggle a $6 million supercomputer to Bulgaria. This computer can calculate the path of a missile or it can simulate a nuclear explosion. cities in 10 countries across the Pacific. They're playing our song. United Airlines Royal Pacific Service. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve halfway around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. We interrupt this fill up. Charge it. To remind you, the Discover card pays you cash back for every charge. Well, we're on our way. It pays to Discover. I'd rather switch than itch. So I switched to Tegrin. Tegrin medicated shampoo controls all the major causes of itching and flaking. So Tegrin is more than strong enough for tough dandruff like yours. Wouldn't you rather switch than itch?